let's learn about the stethoscope every doctor's necessity we will start with what the term stethoscope means the term is derived from two words steth and scope where steth means chest and scope means to inspect these two terms have been put together to form the single word stethoscope which means to inspect the chest now let's look into its history that will help us appreciate the technological advances that we have today as many of us know the first stethoscope was designed by Linac Linac was a French physician and musician he integrated his music skills into medicine and created this masterpiece in this picture you can see one of the stethoscopes that was owned by the first designer himself this piece is made of wood and brass there is an interesting history about this physician as a musician he was trained in the skill of carving his own wooden flutes later in life this skill helped him develop the most famous and essential medical discovery which is found in every doctor's office it is rather fascinating to read the preface of lenox classic treatise that was published in august 1819 it reads as below in 1816 he was consulted by and woman laboring under general symptoms of a diseased heart and in whose case percussion and the application of the hand were of little avail on account of the great degree of fatness the other method just mentioned direct auscultation being rendered inadmissible by the age and sex of the patient i happen to recollect a simple and well known fact in acoustics the great distinctness with which we hear the scratch of a pin at one end of a piece of wood on applying our ear to the other immediately on this suggestion i rolled a quire of paper into a kind of cylinder and applied one end of it to the region of the heart and the other to my ear and was not a little surprised and pleased to find that i could thereby perceive the action of the heart in a manner much more clear and distinct than i had ever been able to do by the immediate application of my ear lenac had then discovered that the new stethoscope was superior to the previously used method of placing the ear over the chest particularly if the patient was overweight a stethoscope also avoided the embarrassment of placing the ear against the chest of a woman here is an inside picture of a first generation stethoscope which is monaural which means it could be used to listen to sounds using one ear only did you know there was a time that lena quit medicine and invested time in art for a few years but after a while he decided to come back to this noble profession as it is said the comeback is always bigger than the setback it is during his comeback that he designed this masterpiece 
There has been numerous modifications to the stethoscope since it was first discovered in the 19th century. From adding tubes and ear pieces and making it binaural instead of the original monaural design to volume control and Bluetooth access. No matter what the adaptation is, learning the basics paves the foundation for knowledge. So let's get into the basics of how a stethoscope works. The stethoscope is used to listen to sounds in various parts of the body including the chest. Both normal and abnormal sounds can be heard using a stethoscope. The three main parts of the stethoscope are the chest piece, the rubber tubing and the ear frame which in turn consists of the oral tube and the ear tip. The chest piece is the part of the stethoscope which is placed over the area to be auscultated. Auscultation is nothing but listening to the body sounds using a stethoscope. The chest piece consists of a smaller bell and a large flat diaphragm. So as you can see the chest piece is two-sided with a bell and a diaphragm and these Two sides are connected by a drum that you can see in the middle. And also notice the stem. This part of the stethoscope helps connect the chest piece with the rubber tubing. There are few modifications of the bell. So one of that is the bell may be covered using a flat structure to convert it into a small diaphragm. So I may think why do we need two diaphragms? So notice that the size of this one is small. So can you guess why we would need that? Yes. So it is to auscultate for children because their chest surface area is relatively small and so a smaller diaphragm would be better used to auscultate sounds in them. And this diaphragm that is the smaller uh, covering over the bell it can be removed and then you can use the bell as it is when needed so as you know this is the chest piece of the stethoscope which is connected to the rubber tubing through a stem. So you can see the stem that is the structure here connects the chest piece with the rubber tubing. And this rubber tubing in turn is connected to the ear frame. Ear frame is the part of the stethoscope that is 
placed over the years during auscultation and that in turn has an oral tube oral means nothing but ear so it's a tube that is placed near the ear and an ear tip which is inserted into the external auditory canal of the ear during auscultation here you can see a clearer inside picture of the ear frame it consists of the oral tube and the ear tips you can also see a spring like structure here that connects both the oral tubes that is it keeps them in position and also allows the flexibility while using the stethoscope there are also some variations in the stethoscope like for example there may be just a diaphragm and no bell or there can also be a variation in the way the rubber tubing is connected to the ear frame like for example that can be a y shaped spring here which looks something like this on the inside so these are some variations before we get into the details of how it works let's first learn how to wear a stethoscope the first step to wearing a stethoscope the right way is to hold it in front of you with the ear tips pointing away from you i will explain it to you using few pictures so in this picture here you can see that the person is holding the stethoscope in front of them but the ear tips are pointing towards them so we don't want that the ear tip should be pointing away from you so this is a wrong way of holding it instead what you should do is hold it in such a way that the ear tips face away from you so i hope you can cl clearly see the distinction so when the ear tips are pointing towards you you can see those whole like structures facing you so you can see that when you hold it like that but when you hold it the right way when the ear tips are facing away from you you cannot see that hole so this will be the right way of holding it so do this before you wear a stethoscope then insert the ear tips into your ear canal now you would be wondering why do i have to hold it like that and wear it this way what difference does it make that is because when you hold it this way the ear tips will align with your ear canal and you'll be able to fit it firmly in place and you'll be able to better hear the sounds when you auscultate in other terms your ear canal is directed forwards that is the opening external auditory canal opening is directed forwards and you also need to place your ear tip in the same direction when you do it that way the ear tips will perfectly fit into your ear canal that's the reason why you need to wear it the right way so that you can better listen to the sounds this picture demonstrates the correct placement of the ear tips so the ear tips of the stethoscope must point in the same direction as your ear canals which is forward and downward 
so here you can see the ear tip is pointing forward and downward which is the correct method of placing the ear tips on the ear this is the wrong way it shouldn't be placed in the opposite direction that is wrong this is the right way of placing it forward and downward the same direction as your ear canals that way you can better appreciate the sounds if the ear tip is placed incorrectly it will be against the back of the external ear canal which will affect the sound quality so always wear it the right way with the ear tip pointing forwards and downwards same as the ear canal before you auscultate and listen to the sounds you need to first rotate the chest piece 180 degrees to open the bell or the diaphragm to do this hold the stem using the thumb and index finger of one hand and with the other hand just rotate the chest piece 180 degrees and when you do it the right way you'll hear a click sound at which point either the bell or the diaphragm will be open when the bell is open the diaphragm is closed and when the diaphragm is open then the bell is closed So using that method you can open the side of the chest piece that you want to use and then auscultate. As we learned before when the diaphragm is open the bell is closed and vice versa. Now how will you know exactly which side is open? So there is a test for that. Fit your your piece to your ears and tap gently on the diaphragm using your index finger so first fit the ear piece or the ear tip to your ears and then tap gently on the diaphragm that is one side of the chest piece using your index finger now when you are placing the ear tip over your ears and then tapping on the diaphragm of the chest piece at the same time if the tap is audible if you hear that tap that means the diaphragm is open and the bell is closed if you do not hear it if it is not audible that means the diaphragm is closed and the bell is open it's that simple the bell of the stethoscope is the smaller side of the chest piece that can be used to listen to low frequency sounds it must be held lightly against the skin for proper amplification when you're placing the chest piece over the area of auscultation for example when you want to listen to the heart sound and you place the chest piece over the chest what happens is the sound waves that are generated by the heart sounds get concentrated over the chest piece and these are then transmitted through the rubber tubing to the ear tip and then you are able to hear the sound in case of the bell you need to hold it lightly against the skin while auscultating to allow proper amplification of the sounds 
the low frequency sounds that can be auscultated are the mid diastolic murmur that can be heard in mitral stenosis which is a valvular heart disease and you can also hear the s3 sound using the bell this sound is heard during heart failure the diaphragm of the stethoscope is the larger flat side of the chest piece that allows listening to high pitched or high frequency sounds and it functions by filtering out the low pitched sounds and accentuating the high pitched sounds it must be held firmly against the skin for proper amplification the sounds that can be heard using the diaphragm are the high pitch sounds or the high frequency sounds such as the bowel sounds lung sounds the normal s2 or the second heart sound and abnormal heart sounds such as the ejection click which can be aortic or pulmonary the mid systolic click and the early diastolic murmur heard in aortic regurgitation one of the variations available is a tunable diaphragm in which case there is just one diaphragm there is no bell in the stethoscope the diaphragm itself can be tuned to function as a bell or a diaphragm that is because this is pressure sensitive when you need to use it as a bell you just have to hold the diaphragm lightly over the skin to listen to low frequency sounds and when you need to use it as a diaphragm you can just hold it firmly over the skin to listen to high frequency sounds some heart sounds such as the third and fourth heart sounds normally cannot be heard using auscultation in abnormal conditions like heart failure the s3 can be heard during auscultation so in order to study these heart sounds which cannot be heard on auscultation we can use a device called as a phonocardiogram which provides a graphical representation of the heart sounds this is a phonocardiograph and this is how the graphical recording of the heart sounds look like when using a phonocardiogram so using this you can study both the normal and abnormal heart sounds with the graphical representation and the sounds which cannot be heard with auscultation can also be studied by using this phonocardiograph there are few newer stethoscopes which also have a phonocardiograph attached to it that enables the listener to better learn and appreciate the heart sounds isn't it amazing to learn the mechanics of this simple musical instrument click on the links in the description to select the stethoscope that is right for you if you like the video click the thumbs up share it leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell notification so that you can get updates whenever i post a new video until then happy learning